Now, thank you, Paul. So my, my object is to talk about long wavelengths allow usage of less power and lower energy. And where I've come from in terms of laser usage has been uh, from 810 now up to 1470. And hopefully I'll show you why I have morphed into a 1470. No, I'm not. Why I've gone to 1470. So the variables that, that affect um, laser ablation are two. One is wavelength and two is optic fiber um, development. So depending upon the diameter, depending upon the tip, um, these can change how the biological behavior of endothermal ablation behave. The modifiers that, that we look at in terms of all of the laser wavelengths are power, which is measured in watts, and energy, which is measured in joules, or coined joules per centimeter, or LEED. So when we look at wavelength or fiber, what is more important? So why does wavelength matter? So when we look at laser side effects, we look at vein wall perforations with extravasation of blood into the surrounding tissues. We look at the inflammatory cascade that develops from that and pain. So we know that perforations are more common uh, with hemoglobin-based lasers and those are the A10s to the 1064s and less as we go up scale to the 1320s and the 1470s, which are water-based um, targets. In a study that, that looked at uh, hemoglobin-based uh, wavelengths, um, there seemed to be a difference as we went from 810 to 980. And then Dr. Postel was able to show a difference between um, 1320 uh, lasers um, with different power, which then suggested to me that perhaps there is a sweet spot in looking at power, which I call a modification. So once we got through with the idea that 810 and 980 were effective, and these lasers are all effective, we tried to see if there was any difference as we went up to the water-based lasers in terms of recovery or patient outcome. And as we looked at this, uh, Dr. Mackey 